We just completed our ultimate dream editing setup. Come on in. For today's setup, I wanted to focus on creators. The ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi is a sleek professional design pack full of features to enhance the user's workflow. For starters, we have a front panel USB Type-C connector, and if you plug the six pin PCIe cable in, it supports fast 60 watt charging. There are two Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C ports located at the rear, plenty of USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two display ports for Thunderbolt 4, and Wi-Fi 6E connection. The motherboard also has support for numerous Gen 4 NVMe drives if you wish to keep the cables to a minimum and take advantage of faster speeds. For the CPU, we decided to go with the Core i9-12900 CPU. The i9-12900 has a turbo boost of 5.1 GHz with a total of 16 cores, 8 being performance, 8 being efficient. Performance cores carry 2 threads, whereas efficient cores carry 1 for a total of 24 threads. The i9-12900 will allow us to get the most out of our system when we are editing our footage on a daily basis. To install our CPU, we need to remove the latch and pull up the latching system. The CPU has a small triangle in the corner which lines up with the triangle on the motherboard. Insert the CPU carefully between the notches on the socket and close it back up the same way it was undone. The Corsair MP600 Pro will help to assist us with great transfer speeds and load times for our favorite content creation programs. We will be utilizing Gen 4 read and write speeds up to 7,000 megabytes per second and 6,550 megabytes per second respectively with two terabytes of storage which will allow us to get the most out of our motherboard. The best part is, we still have plenty more NVMe slots available on the motherboard if we ever need more storage. The motherboard has its own heat spreader, so there will be no need for the stock Corsair heatsink. The ASUS ProArt also features easy locking of NVMe drives, which are screwless. That will come in super handy for swapping out any drives if we ever need it. And believe me, we will eventually need it because of our black magic raw footage. It takes up a lot of space. But luckily, the motherboard also features the USB Type-C ports, which allow super fast transfer speeds to our external SSD, so we can also use them as backups. That's very neat. RAM is a big part of content creation, so we decided to go with 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAM. We went for the non-RGB kit to match the rest of our aesthetic and professional design. This particular kit has CL40 timings and runs at 5200 MHz. We edit raw Blackmagic footage with 10-bit color, so plenty of RAM is essential for smooth workflow. Slots 2 and 4 is where these sticks should be installed for best performance. This is a case that we have not used on the channel before, so I wanted to give it a try. This is the Azacast. It is a premium all metal design with a huge wing shell, which also helps to give that professional premium feel that we are after. The case is also open air, so there is plenty of airflow to keep all of our components cool while we work. The front panel has two USB 3 and a USB type C, so we can take advantage of faster transfer speeds or extra charging ports for our camera batteries, sliders, and more. The case does come with a pre-installed ARGB fan. However, we'll be replacing this for an all black design. The Azacast can support up to ATX size motherboards and this is one of those rare occasions where the 24 pin cutout actually aligns with the 24 pin on the motherboard. So that made me very happy. To power the system, we decided to go with the ASUS ROG Thor 2. This is their brand new 1000 watt platinum rated power supply with integrated RGB lighting and OLED display for power draw readout. In my opinion, this is one of, if not the best looking power supply on the market, and it even comes with pre-sleeved cables. Now due to the case having a closed in bottom with no vent, I've decided to install the power supply with the fan facing up. This will allow the fan to draw in the cooler air from the openings of the case and vent the hotter air out the back. 
for content creation, we want to take advantage of hardware encoding. This is where we use a portion of the GPU to help with the CPU's compute intensive tasks. This usually results in faster rendering times or more FPS when streaming. To achieve this, we need a monster graphics card such as the ASUS RTX 3080 Tough graphics card. The Tough 3080 features three fans for cooling which do not operate at lower temperatures. This means no jet engines in the background of voiceovers. The GPU has plenty of display ports for multiple monitor setups and 10 gigs of VRAM. For cooling the CPU, you know we can only go with liquid. This is the ROG Ryogen 2 360 liquid CPU cooler. This cooler comes with three Noctura fans, some of the best performance in the industry with an all black design. If you want RGB, you'd have to buy the fans separately. The cooler also comes with a customizable LCD screen to make your rig feel personal. I decided to swap out the Noctura fans with the Tough Fan 12 Performance Radiator fans. This was due to the fact that I wanted to keep all the fans matching inside the system. I think it'd look a bit silly having two different types installed. The Tough fans also have that small gold accent in the middle which matches really well with the motherboard design. I decided to install the fans on the inside rather than the outside the radiator. I noticed that the case only has a small gap in the front to intake air, so by swapping the fans to the opposite side of the radiator, we get the better looking side of the fans viewable, and because it is an open style case, the fans have much more movement of cooler air. It was a super tight fit, and if you were doing custom water cooling, you would be required to put the fans on the other side to make the radiator stick out to avoid the top case structure panel. The cooler has thermal paste pre-applied, so all I had to do was pull off the LCD screen to have access to the screws to tighten it down. The rear fan I've also decided to install as an exhaust for better looks as it is an open case and case pressure is non-existent. While the ROG Thor power supply comes with pre-sleeved cables, I like the look of thicker cables, so I decided to install some black sleeved ones. And once again, the 6-pin next to the 24-pin provided us with 60 watts of juice for fast charging. So I was shopping for some lighting for the setup, nothing sort of crazy or overbearing, so I wanted it to have a backlight design and also I didn't want it to cost an arm and a leg. And I actually came across these, the Govi Glide Hexa light panels. They're cheaper than the competition and you actually get more panels than the competition. They also have something called RGBIC technology. So if you want RGB, each individual panel can display up to six different colors at one time. Whereas if you want normal RGB, you can only have one color per panel. But I'll show you guys a little later on. One other amazing feature about the Govi Glide Hexa light panels is the connections they use for the power. They're actually flexible, meaning that you can install these light panels on the corner of walls, which is a really neat feature. In fact, the package also comes with a little level bubble, so we better hope we get them all straight. To control the lights, I had to download the Govi app and simply pair them together. To control the colors, there are a few functions, so let's go into the basic color mode. You can select individual panels and set their color. You can even play around with the brightness of individual panels. In the music section, there are numerous different music modes which react to sound. So if you prefer to have it sync with music to create a certain atmosphere, that option is there. Energic was my personal favorite. Next, we have the scene tab, which is where I use 
usually spend the most of my time. There are lots of preset options with loads of different tabs to choose from depending on your mood. And if we select rainbow, this is where you can see the RGBIC technology in full effect with each individual panel able to display up to six colors at one time. You can even change the direction of where the effect will start from. Lastly is the DIY section. You can create and customize your own effects here, but personally, I don't really use this section. However, I know a lot of people will love this. I mean, you guys saw how awesome these are. That's pretty much why I chose them. We'll get these installed on the wall pretty soon, but first I wanna get the desk in place. If you wanna learn a little bit more about these, I'll leave a link down below. Okay, this desk looks fantastic. It is the natural finish, however. Now, as much as I think this looks absolutely amazing, it's not gonna match the rest of the wood in the setup. So we actually have to give this a stain, which will help seal it and help darken it a tiny bit. Now, what we've done is we deliberately went out and we bought some desk legs that were a tiny bit bigger than the piece of wood itself. And what this allows for us to do is hang our microphone arm from the back because there is a bit of overhang. It's gonna look much cleaner than hanging it from the front or the side. So that's the whole plan with that. Let's see if we can implement that. Let's go ahead, let's get this all stained and I think we have to leave it for a couple of days to dry anyway. This is the star of the setup, where all of the magic happens. This is our ASUS ProArt PA329CV monitor. It is a 4K LED backlit display panel with excellent color accuracy with loads of ProArt color presets. We also have the option to use a C-clamp, lots of swivel, tilt, and height adjustments. The PA329CV also gives you compatibility with most devices with USB Type-C now supported. The USB Type-C port can be used for data transfers, display port, and also provide 90 watts of power delivery. Again, perfect for charging our batteries, phones, laptops, you name it. The monitor also has built-in USB hub, which I'll be taking advantage of. I'll show you more in depth of how it helps us out in our daily life of creation a little later on. Personally for content creation, I like to have the audio through the speakers, which I would say is opposite to popular opinion. That's just my personal preference. The look and feel of the Edifier R1280T speakers further amplified the aesthetic I was looking for for the setup. I found this neat keyboard on Amazon which matches this setup perfectly. I still have access to function keys for macros, so it was a no brainer. I've always had an MX Master mouse for content creation. I love that it is wireless and it has a bunch of macro buttons on the side. So I decided to upgrade and get the latest MX Master 3. I found this particular audio interface on special on Amazon. And I wanted something simple, black, and not too big. An audio interface is a must for us as we like to use XLR input for our Rode microphone and we can adjust on the fly. We also found this awesome LED clock on Amazon with a wooden look, so I decided to purchase it and add it to our list of accessories for the setup.
and this is my setup. I've now been using the ProArt PA329 CV monitor for a few weeks now, and I really love the implementation of the preset options, and I tend to lean towards sRGB. This preset covers a huge range of the color space, and it is able to represent colors accurately on this particular monitor. There are loads of presets, but it just depends on the particular task that you're wanting to achieve. And of course, personal preference. While I'm editing our Blackmagic RAW 10-bit footage, this is very important because RAW footage, while it may look gray and bland, retains its quality and detail. The colors come in post-production. It is also a 4K IPS panel. This means that there is no color shift and it retains its color and consistency even when viewing the monitor from different angles. While editing our footage, because the timeline can get very populated, there is a lot of compute tasks needed. This is where we can enable GPU Accelerator, which will allocate some of our RTX 3080 Tough Gaming's compute power to take some of the strain from the CPU, which is great for us. I mean, the last thing that we want is a slow timeline and a laggy process. The ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi has been absolutely fantastic for us. We like to make sure that everything is put on charged and all of our data is transferred at the end of a day's work. The I.O. features plenty of USB ports so we can hook up multiple chargers. We also have two Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C ports which are used for transferring our footage from our external SSD which we use for recording. And this saves us a lot of time waiting for files to transfer from the SSD to the PC. Our files are large and a day's worth of filming could be up to 300 gigs. That's raw 10-bit footage for you. The USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C front panel connector can also provide us with transfer speeds up to 20 gigabytes per second. But not only that, because we have the six pin power PCIe cable connected on the motherboard, it also provides quick charging with 60 watts of power supplied. I actually love this, like when I'm going to take a break, a lunch break, I plug in my phone or some batteries for a quick boost so it keeps me going throughout the day. The motherboard also has four NVMe Gen 4 slots with a Q-latch system. We need a lot of storage space for our raw footage. As I said, one day's filming can be up to 300 gigs, so you can imagine what it would look like after a couple of weeks. Not to mention, we are also doing a lot of transferring of footage between drives, so having Gen 4 speeds certainly comes in handy and saves a lot of time. The system itself produces next to no noise. The GPU's fans do not spin unless it reaches a certain temperature. Now, now this comes in super handy for our voiceovers. We don't want any background noise. I mean, that wouldn't be pleasant for you guys as the viewers, would it? Overall, I'm super excited to be able to use this new setup. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I'll leave all of the specs in the video description if you want to check out anything further that we used in this video. And if you want to support the channel, YouTube channel memberships or Patreon are linked in the video description as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.